What if the most important migration in human history didn't start in Egypt or Mesopotamia, but in Jordan? Not the Jordan of today, with its cities, highways, and borders, but a forgotten world, nearly 80,000 years old, when the land wasn't desert, but green when rivers flowed through the Jordan Rift Valley, carving paths not just through earth, but through time. This isn't theory. It's happening now, in ancient sediments, buried stone tools, and DNA sequences hiding inside the blood of modern Jordanians. And what we're uncovering, it could rewrite the story of our species. You see, for decades, scientists believed early Homo sapiens left Africa through a southern coastal route, skirting the Red Sea, brushing past Yemen, and into Asia. But the evidence never fully fit. The pieces felt scattered. Then came the discoveries in Jordan. First came the tools. Hand axes, scrapers, flints, abandoned along what is now dry earth, but once formed a lush corridor of wetlands and rivers. These weren't simple campfires of nomads. These were breadcrumbs of a great exodus. And then came the genetics. Within the DNA of modern Jordanians, scientists began finding ancestral signals that predate civilization itself, lineages that echo African origins, but also bear the fingerprints of Europe and the Near East. This is an accidental. It's geographical destiny. Because Jordan sits at the only natural land bridge connecting three continents, Africa, Asia, and Europe. And 80,000 years ago, when the climate opened a narrow window of opportunity, it may have been the very first exit point for humanity out of Africa. Think about that. Every skyscraper in Tokyo, every village in Scandinavia, every island in Polynesia, they may all trace their beginnings not just to the Rift Valley of Africa, but to the Rift Valley of Jordan. And the land remembers, in its caves and tombs, in its nomadic tribes and urban dwellers, the genetic echoes of that journey still survive. They're not obvious, not something a museum can display, but they are real. Molecular signatures locked inside chromosomes, passed from generation to generation, unchanged by time, untouched by empire. Jordan. A forgotten waypoint might just be the original chapter of us this is not just a new route on migration map it's a new origin myth one told not in language or stone but in code the code of life the code you carry imagine two men standing on the same soil one lives in a tent beneath the stars of wadi rum tracing the winds like his ancestors the other navigates traffic in downtown amman his bloodline shaped by cities and strangers they share a flag, a land, even a language, but what flows through their veins tells two completely different stories. For years, Jordan was viewed as a genetic whole, a single population shaped by a shared geography. But when scientists began to peer deeper, not into faces, but into genomes, they found a fracture hidden beneath the surface. At the molecular level, Jordanians do not form one tribe. They form two. One group, descended from centuries of urban settlement, shows unmistakable genetic links to Levantine populations, Palestinians, Syrians, Lebanese, a continuity that echoes through both maternal and paternal lines. But the second group, the Bedouins of the eastern frontier, stands apart. Their DNA clusters not with the Levant, but with North Africa. And it isn't subtle. It's statistically precise. Markers like DM. HS 2.43 and ACE reveal differences so sharp, they act like fault lines under the surface of identity. Principal component analysis doesn't just hint at separation, it visually carves it into charts and clusters. The two groups, plotted on genetic maps, drift away from one another like tectonic plates. How did this happen? The answer lies in movement, or the lack of it. The Bedouins, moving across deserts in close kinship circles, preserved their ancient genome like a sealed vault, low admixture, high endogamy, a cultural choice that became a genetic time capsule, while the urban Jordanians, rooted in cities like Amman and Erbid, absorbed centuries of gene flow from merchants, migrants, exiles, and conquerors. And you can see it not just in DNA frequencies, but in genetic diversity itself. Urban Jordanians display higher heterozygosity, a wider spectrum of gene variants, the fingerprints of constant interaction. The Bedouins, in contrast, carry a legacy of resilience, of continuity, of preservation, 
In their genes lives a quieter story, one shaped by firelight, silence, and the endless horizon. These two genomes are not in conflict. They are in parallel. One, the river that gathered many streams. The other, the spring that never moved. And when viewed together, they tell something extraordinary. That Jordan is not one genetic narrative, it is a duet. One voice shaped by the world, the other preserved from it. This is why studying Jordanians as a single group fails to capture the truth. The richness is in the contrast, the beauty in the divergence, and the future in understanding both. There's a place in Jordan where the rules of genetics and geography bend. 400 meters below sea level, surrounded by silence and salt, a population lives whose DNA doesn't match anything around it. Not the cities. Not the deserts. Not even the Levant itself. This is the Dead Sea. But what lies in its shadow is anything but dead. When geneticists first analyzed samples from this region, the results didn't just surprise them. They defied expectation. In a part of the world defined by Semitic and Levantine ancestry, this group carried something else entirely. A stunning 39% of mitochondrial haplogroup U3, a lineage far more common in Eurasian pockets than anywhere in the Middle East. Even more striking, nearly one in five Boer maternal lineages traced to Sub-Saharan Africa, lineages rarely seen in the Levant and virtually absent in the rest of Jordan. This wasn't migration. It wasn't modern trade. It was something older, stranger, more isolated. Then came the Y-DNA results. In most of Jordan, haplogroup J reigns, the genetic legacy of Semitic-speaking peoples. But here, R1, M173 asterisk, and E3B3M34 dominate, markers with roots stretching across continents, from the Ethiopian highlands to northern Cameroon, a cross-continental echo, trapped in a population that, for centuries, barely moved. So what happened here? One answer lies in isolation. Geography made this community nearly unreachable, a basin surrounded by cliffs, where small groups could live, marry, and reproduce within closed circles for generations. Over time, certain lineages didn't just survive, they intensified. Founder effects kicked in. Genetic drift took over, and what remained was a genetic fingerprint unlike any other in the region. But isolation is only part of the story. There are whispers in this data, whispers of ancient migrations, Forgotten settlements, lost trade routes, or perhaps a small population swept in by force or faith centuries ago, who then stayed, married, and disappeared from history, but not from the genome. This is not just a scientific anomaly. It's a portal, because hidden in the blood of a few hundred people is the memory of journeys across deserts and seas, of bodies that moved long before borders were drawn. It challenges how we define identity. It asks, what does it mean to belong to a land, if your DNA remembers somewhere else? And perhaps most haunting of all, this population, so distinct, so isolated, might vanish in a few generations. As gene flow resumes, as families expand beyond the basin, the unique markers may dilute, and with them, the only living record of this ancient genetic divergence. Which means, we are racing against time. This isn't just research, it's rescue. Rescue of a human story only DNA still remembers. In northern Jordan, an ancient city lies buried beneath layers of soil and silence. Pella, once part of the Decapolis, now mostly stone and dust. Archaeologists came here expecting pottery, bones, maybe the residue of empire. They did not expect to find traces of East Asia. When the skeletal remains were analyzed, something astonishing emerged for individuals matched the genetic profile of Bronze and Iron Age Levantines, as predicted. But two others didn't fit any known regional ancestry. Their genome carried unmistakable affinities with ancient East Asian populations. No caravan route could explain it. No recorded war. No documented migration. It was as if a forgotten current of humanity had swept through Jordan over 3,000 years ago and left only a whisper. Could someone have traveled thousands of kilometers across Asia before the Silk Road even existed? Or did entire communities once move across Eurasia in ways we've never imagined? This anomaly is more than just statistical noise. It's a challenge, a direct confrontation with everything we thought we knew about ancient movement. 
because if East Asian gene flow reached Jordan during the Bronze Age, then the story of Eurasian contact is far older and far more complex than we ever realized. But Pella isn't the only site whispering secrets. In southern Lebanon, at Sidon, another set of remains revealed something far more expected, but just as powerful, a direct genetic link between Canaanite populations from 3,700 years ago and modern-day Levantines, Palestinians, Syrians, Jordanians. Even after invasions, religious shifts, and border redrawings, the ancestral core didn't vanish. It endured. These twin discoveries, one a mystery, the other a confirmation, reveal two sides of the same genetic coin. On one side, continuity, the quiet persistence of bloodlines that never left. On the other, collision, a sudden, unexplained genomic presence that hints at forgotten roads or long-lost travelers, buried beneath millennia of silence. Together, they reshape how we see the ancient world, not as closed civilizations, separated by vast distances, but as a living, breathing network of unpredictable intersections. And Jordan stands at one of those intersections, not as a passive waypoint, but as an active participant in the symphony of movement that defined the ancient world. The real story of this land is not only what was built here, it's what passed through, and what stayed behind, hidden not in stone, but in the spiral of chromosomes. Some echoes are loud, some barely audible. But in the dust of Pella, we found an echo we weren't even listening for. When we imagine the great empires that crossed through Jordan, Roman legions carving roads into the hills, Byzantine monks building stone chapels, Arab armies carrying new faith, it feels certain they must have left their mark in the blood of the people. And yet the DNA says otherwise. What centuries of conquest could not erase? The genome preserved in silence. Across dozens of studies, the story repeats. The core genetic foundation of Jordanians remains startlingly intact, despite the footprints of empires across its soil. Archaeology shows cultural layering, ruins, languages, architecture. But deep inside the double helix, there is resistance, a quiet continuity that defies 2,000 years of invasion and trade. The most dominant paternal haplogroups are J1, J2, and E1b1b. Lineages with deep roots in the Levant and Arabian Peninsula. Not Roman. Not Crusader. Not even Ottoman. These empires ruled the land, but barely touched the genome. Even when migrations did leave a genetic trace, they did so carefully. Circassians and Chechens, brought in the 19th century from the Caucasus, retained distinctive genetic markers, tightly clustered and endogamous. Armenians, too, preserved their unique lineages maintaining distance even within integration. But the broader Jordanian genome? It tells a different tale. One of a population that, while open to influence, never lost its center. There are signs, of course, genetic echoes that hint at contact across seas, small waves of European ancestry, Mediterranean fragments, minor variants consistent with trade, exile, or war. But these are notes in the background, not the melody. Because even as history wrote and rewrote the borders, the genetic signature beneath remained firm. It is not the signature of empire. It is the signature of place. Perhaps that's what makes Jordan's genetic story so profound. It isn't a tale of erasure. It's a tale of resilience. Where other lands saw their gene pools shift wildly under conquest, Jordan kept returning to its foundation, like a song that remembers its original key, no matter how many verses are added. And that's what makes the illusion so compelling. We see the columns, the mosaics, the battlefields, and we assume the people changed. But their DNA whispers something else. We were here before the empire. We remained after it fell. So what defines legacy? Stone? Sword? Or sequence? There's a cost to memory. Sometimes it isn't written in books, it's inherited in silence. In Jordan, the past lives not just in ruins or language but in the very structure of the genome. With every generation, certain choices ripple forward. And one of those choices, practiced for centuries, has shaped the health of thousands. Consanguinity. For decades, marriages between close relatives were more than tradition. They were protection, preservation, a way to keep land, legacy, and lineage intact. But in the world of DNA, 
Closeness can amplify what's hidden, and sometimes, what's dangerous. Today, Jordan faces one of the highest rates of cousin marriages globally, in rural communities and among Bedouin tribes. This number has reached over 60%. The result is not just cultural cohesion, it's a genetic bottleneck, a narrowing of the genome that allows rare mutations to rise unchecked. Children are born with disorders once thought to be global rarities, autosomal recessive diseases, inherited retinal dystrophies, rare immunodeficiencies. Some families carry variants never seen before, mutations so unique. They are found only in Jordanian blood. But within this challenge lies revelation. Geneticists now map these mutations like buried cities. They've discovered novel variants in genes like STAT1, USH2A, IFI1, sequences that would have remained unknown if not for the very patterns that caused them. These aren't just anomalies. They are blueprints, keys to understanding immunity, vision, even cancer. Among families carrying BRCA1 and BRCA2 variants, researchers have identified founder mutations, signatures that reveal not only disease risk, but ancestral origin. Some variants appear in Palestinian communities. Others echo into Mediterranean populations. The DNA becomes a map, not of geography, but of fate. And so Jordan finds itself at a crossroads, a country where the collision of history and health is written in every cell. But this isn't a story of blame. It's a story of awareness. In clinics and counseling centers, change is already unfolding. Young couples sit down with geneticists before marriage. Communities once hesitant to confront biology are now leading conversations. The question has shifted from why us to what now? And that, too, is legacy. Not what we inherit, but what we choose to leave behind. Because the future of Jordanian DNA will not only be shaped by its past, but by the decisions made in the present. To test. To teach. To adapt. To protect. What began as tradition has now become a test of vision. Not just medical, but moral. The genome holds both the burden and the key. It remembers everything. But it's up to us what it writes next.